In 2021, astronomers announced that they had found between 70 and 170 free-floating planets. Such planets are also called rogue because they don't orbit around any star. And the majority of these huge, unattached planets, each approximately as large as Jupiter, dwells in one particular region of the Milky Way galaxy. It's known as the Upper Scorpius OB Stellar Association. Wow, doesn't it sound like the name of some homeowner's association? Anyway, this conclusion was made by a team of astronomers that used telescope observations from all over the world and in space. They also looked through 80,000 wide-field images taken over a couple of decades. Scientists have estimated there might be billions or even trillions of rogue planets wandering around our galaxy. If their estimations are true, it might mean that the Milky Way contains more free-floating planets than stars. Ooh. This region of the sky is around 420 light-years away from Earth. A lot of amateur astronomers are familiar with it, since lots of cool stuff is located there. The most famous targets for astrophotographers include dark nebula, like Bernard 68, Coal Sack, or Pipe Nebula, as well as the colorful region around Rho Ophiuchi. But let's get back to mysterious rogue planets. They wander the galaxy alone, totally untethered. Without stars, they don't have days or nights, only eternal darkness. Of the thousands of planets scientists have detected outside of our solar system, only a dozen or so are starless and cruising on their own. Recently, astronomers have announced one more finding, the tiniest known rogue planet. The mass of this space traveler is somewhere between the masses of Earth and Mars. The term itself, a rogue planet, suggests that such celestial bodies might desert their stars on purpose. They wander off on their own, carving a new path through the Milky Way. But the reality is much more tragic. Rogue planets are usually kicked out of their star systems, doomed to a solitary existence of circling the center of the galaxy on their own. <laughs> How sad. You see, things get messy when planetary systems, including ours, form. While planets appear from the cosmic dust surrounding a newborn star, they jostle one another around. This gravitational game of pool can easily shove some planets toward the edges of a star system or eject one or two of them altogether. Then there are also nearby stars that can shove planets around too. Most stars are not born on their own. Clusters of dozens to thousands of stars often appear in space. No wonder that in such a crowded environment, a star with its own set of planets might whisk away a planet or two from another star. After stealing a planet, it can keep it for itself or cast it out into space. At the same time, some free-floating planets might form in a different way, with no parent star to help them. They appear from collapsed clouds of gas and dust, just like stars do. But sadly, they don't manage to put on enough weight to start nuclear reactions, the ones that make stars emit light. These objects are also known as failed stars. Hey, who said they failed? And they resemble planets. Rogue planets are very hard to detect. When astronomers want to find an exoplanet, they look for something blocking the light of its parent star. That's usually the planet passing between the star and the observer. But researchers can't use the same technique with free-floating planets because, in this case, there's no parent star. The only way to locate them is to rely on gravity. Now, imagine a line of sight between a telescope on Earth and a distant star. When an object crosses that line, its presence is likely to bend and magnify the star's light. This, in turn, makes the star appear brighter than usual. As for the duration of this brightening, it depends on the nature of this moving object. If the brightening lasts a few days, it's a star. If the duration is about a day or so, it's a Jupiter-mass object. And if it's just a couple of hours, this object is something that equals the mass of our planet. But the trickiest part is to figure out whether this object is indeed a rogue planet. It's true that stars whose light such celestial bodies bend can't be their parent stars. They're too far away. But there still might be a parent star, invisible because of the glare of the luminous star. And astronomers have to wait up to a decade for the luminous star to move a bit to check for a potential parent star. If there's still no parent star in sight, then it's proven the planet is traveling solo. One thing is clear. Without parent stars to warm them, rogue planets are frozen worlds. 
Even if ice doesn't go all the way down to their cores, it certainly covers such planets with hard, icy shells. On the bright side, maybe free-floating planets aren't as lonely as we think. They might have moons of their own. They probably take them along when they get pushed out of their cosmic homes. Even more exciting, these exomoons might have liquid water. At least that's what a 2021 study published in the International Journal for Astrobiology claims. Actually, I don't get that magazine, but it sounds fancy. But could a free-roaming world find a new home near a different star? Some experts think it's unlikely. The universe is an incredibly spacious place, and even a large star is hardly able to slow down enough to lasso a fast-moving planet. For example, in 2017, an interstellar guest, an asteroid the size of a skyscraper, appeared in our solar system. It barreled through the solar system and just kept going without stopping or slowing down. But what if it was a rogue planet? Would it stay with us? Astronomers say it's unlikely. If it happened, they would be thrilled. Such a research opportunity. But the rest of us would likely be terrified by the implications of having such a neighbor. At the same time, maybe it wouldn't be such a big problem, considering how big and very empty our solar system is. But even without a rogue planet invading our solar system, the orbits of our planets are going to change one day. In 5 billion years or so, hmm, the sun will start to dim. It'll begin to lose its mass until its gravity is too weak to hold on to the outermost planets of the solar system. Neptune, Uranus, and probably Pluto might turn into rogue planets. They will slowly drift away, unbothered by the cold, and mostly unchanged due to their already frozen environments. And yeah, I know the scientists demoted Pluto as a planet years ago. But it's still a planet to me. So sue me. And what about Earth? Oh, our planet will have a different fate, much more tragic. As stars lose mass nearing the end of their lives, they eject gas and dust in all directions. And since our planet is in the way, it'll most likely get enveloped in this scorching stream and vaporize. But calm down, it won't happen for a few more billion years. And who knows where humanity will be at that time? As for now, astronomers hunt rogue planets with enthusiasm. For example, NASA's Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope is going to conduct a survey to discover more free-floating exoplanets using its powerful techniques of a wide-field telescope. The stars in our Milky Way galaxy move all the time, and chance adjustments of the telescope can help researchers spot rogue planets. But there's one drawback. We won't know the distance to such a planet even if we find one. There's one more mission concept, cleverly called Cleopatra. It might be able to exploit parallax effects to calculate the distances to rogue planets. Parallax is a shift in the position of a foreground object when seen by observers in slightly different locations. To maximize this effect, Cleopatra might hitch a ride on a Mars-bound mission. It's supposed to place it in orbit around the Sun. That's a sufficient distance from Earth which can help the mission effectively measure the parallax signal and fill in the missing information for astronomers.